Okay, I want to talk about, I have some really good news I want to share. It's like not that big of a deal to other people, but it's a really big deal to me. Um, but the topic is around your subconscious and how it is driving this train or whatever vehicle we're on here. Not a sidecar on a man's motorcycle adventure of life. Now, whatever I'm driving here, the subconscious can so easily drive things if you don't realize it. And, when, and so I, I had this huge realization <laughs> It therapy the other day. I think there's a hair hanging off my head. Look at this. Diva. Kitty cat. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Lots of cat stuff today for some reason. I'm at the farm. The pony's over there. Uh, he's done eating though, so you'll see him in another video. Anyway, so also join my Patreon because I, I talk a lot about this over there. And now that I have a little bit of resolution, I want to share it here, but I did it. I don't like to share things until I'm like on the other end of it or have figured something out uh publicly but i will kind of share my process more privately on over there so if you want to join over there please do i uh, also have a live I have lots of lives coming up so whatever whatever anyway so the good news is is i passed my french exam a2 so to get your 10 year uh oh my god you can see the shadow of oh, whatever i don't care to get your 10 year visa or whatever you want to call it in france you have to pass level a2 um, French and so there's a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 basically c2 is like practically native like you're so like Anthony would be c2 level English uh, other than like a very slight accent an occasional mistake uh, you would never know like he speaks fluently almost well, his English is better than mine he pat like when we play Scrabble he wins <laughs> He's, he has a better vocabulary than I do uh, despite being a writer and a storyteller and using words for a living, which is why also has played into all of this crap around language. Um, anyway, you have to pass A2. And as I talked about on Patreon, I was so nervous about this test. My, my relationship to French, I have been kind of processing it for a long time and I've really struggled with it and I can't figure out what it was and the, so much shame like, oh my God, I'm just another American, US American who comes over here and specs everyone to speak my language. Like I don't ever want to be that. So I've been trying, I've been taking French classes since I got here. You know, I pay, I pay, you know, like at least two grand a year, if probably more to learn this language. It's a huge expense. Um, that may not be much to you, but to me, um, and, and in France, two grand, I mean, their salaries here are so low. So uh, anyway, um, it's, a, it's at least two grand, at least two grand. Um, it's a huge investment of time, energy, and it's like, it's really, um, it, it, it <laughs> You just feel so silly, you know? I'm like 46 and I talk like a two-year-old or a three, maybe like a four-year-old in French, you know? So I, I can converse with the children, my niece and nephew, or, you know, but now my, ne my nephew, his French is, of course, way better than mine because he's, you know, seven. But anyway, so to be a storyteller, a writer, and you work with words for a living and, and them being so important to me to be understood. Um, and I know that that's also part of the thing is like the obsession with words and like, especially the written word and all that stuff. But anyway, it's important to me, you know, and it's also it's, it's connected to so many things. I used to be really shy. I should do more videos on that. I literally just didn't talk for a really long time. Like I should do a whole video on that. I was so shy. I know me, right? I literally like set my mind to it, which is probably what I need to do with French. I set my mind to, I'm not going to be shy anymore. I, I am this way, but I refuse to accept that I'm this way. I know I can get, because I, 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 I'm like an extrovert, but, but like put into an introvert's whatever, but it's whatever. It's, I know now it's like <sighs> some trauma tied to it, blah, 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 whatever. In my healing, I've been more, become like more myself, right? But um, anyway, to have finally unlearned being so shy through all of these things that I did. Again, remind me to make that video because it, it, it really... So many people really w want to be more outgoing and they just don't know how. And so they just kind of give up because they're like, this is how I am. And maybe it's so, but I worked very hard to become this outgoing. Um, and so then to go to a country and then have to go back to being shy because in the moment I get like, I freeze. I go into like, I mean, I literally freeze all the time if I'm put on the spot. If I'm warming up, I'm talking, I go, blah, 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 but, and I don't drink. And so many people are like, just get drunk and that's how you can speak. Because that's apparently how everyone learns the language. They get drunk, right? That's not me. I don't drink. I haven't drank in 20 years. I'm not an alcoholic. Um, but I have had addictions in my past. And so I just kind of like, I love, it's like losing my virginity again. 
Although I don't even think that's real, by the way. I don't believe in that. But you know, I'm like, ah, well, I've gone 20 years without it. I don't, I like that. I'm proud of that, right? Um, and also my sugar, like my body doesn't process it well <laughs> at all. That's, and I'm narcoleptic. That's the main reason anyway. So I have nothing that'll like calm me down and like make me just blah, not care. So every time I speak French, I'm like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless I warm up for a while. And, you know, obviously if I'm speaking one-on-one, -on -one, but in a group environment, I'm terrible. So anyway, I really struggle with my relationship to French. And I have been trying to figure out this for a long time and I've talked about it and there's all kinds of things. Like my sister used to be a, teach, a teacher of English as a second language and she's been very helpful and helped me understand that she sees this across the board. Adults who try to learn a language, especially like as adults, but especially the older you get, you end up going back to like your childhood self, like when you first learn your first language or just being in school again. And like, and it really brings up a lot of childhood issues because you're not used to being so bad at something, right? And something so important like talking, right? And so, I, but I also, at the same time, I want to fit in. I have a French family. I have a French husband. I'm in France. I've been here for six years. Um, like my family here loves me so much. And I hate that this thing is standing in the way of me feeling even more of that love and expressing more of that love and connecting even more. But I can't help the fact that I go into these like, freeze or I'm just like Ugh! I like freeze up I freeze up all the time and I hate it and I go into a shame spiral and then on top of that I got ADHD right so mine's just like pew, 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 and I miss one word in a sentence and again one-on-one -on -one, it's much easier I'm focused but in a group it's just bop, 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 bop. and I finally I'm like oh wait they're talking about this and then I'm like okay okay and then I figure out my sentence and by the time I'm ready to bleh, add something they're like onto a new subject or my mind is just like all over the place I have toys that I play with under the table to keep me focused trying to listen like my brain works over time to try to belong to people who love me you know at like every whenever we have Sunday lunch I'm just like okay you can do it Melanie like it's, it's so much self-talk I have this is honestly the hardest thing I think I've ever done y'all know I'm a rock climber I lived in my truck for five years. I have moved to a new country by myself so many times. It's something about this part of moving to another country. I've lived in a lot of different places. A lot of places. I mean, I've started over. I've make, started over making friends. Like I've done, I love challenging myself, but this challenge makes me so insecure and so self-hating and I couldn't figure it out. And then I don't think it's just this. I do think it's being older. I'm 46. So I'm not just like, you know, studying abroad and have no, no responsibilities other than just showing up and learning a language. No, like when I moved here, my dad had just died. I had just broken up with a boyfriend. So I'm processing grief. I had no job, you know, I'm a freelancer. So like I had to make things work. I had to find housing. I had to make all new friends. Like it's really hard to learn a language when you were literally just trying to get your basic human needs met first, which is housing, food, you know, income, make sure that I keep pitching and because that's when I was writing more than doing this um making friends building community fi finding apartment alone was so hard here you know I can talk about that in a whole nother video and so language is something I always worked on since I got here but it was never my like number one thing because like I need to feel I need to feel s safe and secure in all these other ways first but I never gave up learning but I wasn't motivated to in the beginning I was and you know what changed all that getting married getting married my French was doing this the first like year and a half or two years, whatever that I was here. And as soon as I got married and then there was, you know, lockdown, well, lockdown happened right before we got, before we got married, but the pandemic, uh, not that it's over, but you know, when COVID first arrived, all the classes were like, everything shut down. My classes weren't anymore. Like there's a lot happening. So I understand like why it kind of fell back, but I was like, there's something else going on here. And then my, <laughs> my therapist called it out. He called it out. Again, there's lots of reasons for this. But he was like, there's no reason for someone who words are so important to you. I know it's perfectionism and all this other stuff. Because, yeah, when, when you're working with words for a living is your job, then the perfectionism and the shame and all that stuff, trying to do that in another language, it's like even bigger, right? Expect more from myself, all this stuff. But he's like, you... You have grasped the, your own, home, you know, your, your native language so much and you love language so much and you're so invested in it. And that's what you do for a living is you work with words. There's no reason why you can't do that with French. It's not about the French. 65, I think 60 or 65% of the words in English share the same like root or like are almost French. They just have pronounced different and have a little different spelling. And he was like, right now you're just an American 
living in France. You got a back door, you got your exit. As long as you are just an American living in France, it's easier for you to go back. There's less to lose. He's, I mean, he, this man knows me very well. <laughs> he knows all my trauma stuff. He's really, and again, I've said, I don't usually have like male health people, but I've had three in my life. And this is one of them that changed my life because they could just see right through it all. And they also just understand and have all the training and just EMDR, psychologists, all this stuff, right? And he was like, now no, anyone who knows my story, it's like, this has been a theme in my life. You can, you can take the girl out of the truck, but you can't take the truck out of the girl. And by that, I mean my whole life, even when I kept, even I lived in the truck for like five years or maybe even more. I moved back in the truck a couple times because I missed living on wheels, adventure. Now it's not that I love that adventurous part of me. I love that part, right? It's not all about trauma, right? But there is something very convenient about living in a truck where basically your home is on wheels and you can cut and run at any point. Any point you don't feel safe, any point you need to get out, it's easy. The more roots, the, the deeper your roots are in a place, the harder it is to extract yourself. Now y'all know that I talk about, especially women in marriage, that you always need an, an, uh, an escape plan. And I, and I firmly, and that is still my message in terms of money. I will always have a separate bank account with money to leave. Not just to leave a marriage, but to leave this country and resettle somewhere else. I will always have that just in case, just in case. And knowing that I have that gives me the confidence that I am choosing this every day versus like, well, like the trad wives, they're like, oh, at a certain point, if they realize that this man is terrifying or sucks, what are they going to do now? They got no income. They got no money. You're stuck, right? So the having the choice having the emergency backup plan so that i can leave i'm i will always be stand firm on that it is stupid especially having been in an abusive relationship i will never ever put myself in a situation where i um and that i can't leave and knowing that i have that gives me security because i am here because i want to be here i'm choosing to be here i love my life right but language keeps me from putting my roots in more. Now, the funny thing is, is that even I can say like, I'm, I'm learning this for me and whatever. I've tried to been like, oh, I'm not learning it for my husband. I'm learning French for me because that's what I was doing when I first got here, right? When I first got to France, I started taking French classes. I was going on Tinder dates all the time and just bop, 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 bop. I go on a Tinder date and I'm like, yeah, let's hook up. But like, you gotta talk to me in French for several hours. And I would talk for hours and then they'd eat my and I was like, great, this is like a twofer, right? <laughs> but those, but there was no real connection there because like, I'm still speaking like a four-year-old or two-year-old or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm not really, you know, going deep into conversations. It's just like light general, uh, and then hook up and then bye. And that was easy for, that was good for me because then I couldn't get attached. That's so why I tell y'all sometimes I would, when I was in my hookup era, I would only hook up with dudes who were like, when I was on vacation or dudes who were visiting from out of town, in terms of one night stands, or when I moved here, dudes who couldn't speak any English. Because then I can't like get attached to you. Like I can't get ties easily. Um, like it doesn't matter how good in bed you are, you will never be able to manipulate me into wanting to date you because we don't talk. <laughs> That's why I speak the same language enough to do that. So uh, that was great for one night stands and like hookups and like my friends and stuff. But I'm married and he speaks perfect English and um, he's my best friend and there's like it's different obviously and so and i've also talked about the english will always be the language of our couple because it also connects me to home it connects me to myself it connects me and so i still believe that like english will always be the the the, the language of our couple but that doesn't mean that i can never speak french with him right and i've kind of been i mean he's kind of surprised at how infrequently i will ever speak i i know he'll try to speak french to me and he's realized he hasn't done it enough because he just kind of like we got in the habit of just never speaking french at home right but that's not helpful to me and it's 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 and it, it i i need to challenge myself but it says that like talking about stupid stuff that's not like deep relationship stuff or really important details about logistics obviously i'm going to say that in english because his english is so good but even in the daily i won't speak french to him and my mm, my therapist was like, yeah, I mean, he's like, the, the more you, by fully giving yourself to another language, by fully immersing yourself, by putting in that time and really, and he was like, 
it's going to be harder for you to just cut and run. You're not just, even though I have no plans of moving back to the U.S., I just continue to stay. But making that decision to really let myself be loved by my family members and, and, and give back that love, I had no idea that there was just this fear of being trapped, fear of vulnerability, fear of connection. And here's the other thing, I'm also reliving an old pattern because even though I feel so safe in this relationship and so seen and so heard and so loved and cared for, it's like subconsciously, um, I'm recreating this thing where I feel not a part of the family, you know? And I'm doing it to myself. And, and I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but basically it's like the language part is like the living in my truck thing. Again, you should always have money to be able to get out. Always have a backup plan. But this is beyond that. This is not that. This is like... No, I can't give myself, like, I can't be, like, French or American. I can't be, like, full, I'm always a stranger. Like, because being a stranger means you're, you're not quite there. You're not fully committed. And even though I have, I commit um, on a daily and weekly and yearly basis to my French, my, my friendships, my community. I'm in drum club. I'm in, you know, I have a dog. I have, like, all these things. I am committed to being here, but something about the French gives me that easy, like, well, I could just leave and go back. It's fine. He was right, man. And realizing that and it being tied to marriage, right? Because I am, I am, and I've always known this. I know, it's not like I, I am this, but I have always been a flight risk because the fear of not feeling safe in my home is so big. I don't ever want to feel that way again, right? I always want to know that I'm like, you know, like, I mean, I, I am so, I mean, Anthony's like my best friend. He's like the level of Liz, obviously. I wouldn't have married him if he wasn't. If you know who Liz is, then she's like my, my soulmate. And Anthony's another soulmate. You get more than one, by the way. But by, it's like, it's, it's, it's just another wall. It's a shield. And I couldn't figure that out because I was like, what I, when I went to go take that French test, anybody, people on Patreon know, I showed up. I cried, I froze during the, the, the conversation part. Second, she asked me, what do you think you'd do it if you joined a gym? What class would you take? It was supposed to be a normal conversation. And I was like, <gasps> and I'm like, oh, should I take, would I take yoga? Would I take swimming? What's my story? And I overanalyzed it. And part of that's just like a me problem. But I, because I froze in that one moment, I like panicked over that freezing. And I just started crying. And I was like, and I was like, and I, was like I, I cried, I kept going. After I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know, whatever, I don't want to. Um, I kept going. I finished, but I screwed myself because that sounded like I, I'm so insecure in French. And then during the hearing, and, like the, the, the reading, hearing, and written test, I cried through the whole thing. I was in the corner so no one could see me. So I put like my hair like this. And I was so overwhelmed because I kept freezing. My, my, I, was, I cried. I, and I can, I can quiet cry really well. Uh, survivors know this very well. Any woman who's been in a bed with a man who is terrifying, you can cry without moving. You can, you can cry hysterically and keep breathing normally and nobody knows that you're crying. It's fascinating. I'm like, wow, I'm so good at this quiet bawling. So I was, and I cried so hard that I lost my contact. It went way up in my eye. So that slowed me down. So like, and then also the keyboard is different. The French keyboard is different from the U.S. So I had, every time I put A, it's a Q. So I had to, so I lost so much time because of that stuff, even though I'd practiced on that too. Anyway, I was a mess. I was a mess. They said originally that I failed. Then they also send it away to someone else so they can review it and they give a second opinion. And they decided that I passed. Just barely. But at my worst, when I'm in full on <gasps> crying, uh, even at my worst, I'm A2, baby. I am A2! That means I'm actually B1, which is what my uh, teacher, my uh, private tutor has been telling me all along. It's like, your problem is not the French. Your problem is your shame. Your problem is all of these, your, ner your, <laughs> your nervous system, your responses. That is what we gotta work on. We've gotta work on that because it's not the level of French. It's in there. It's you like freezing up and we have, and, and I finally know. In addition to all the other things, that's what it's about. It's about that. Yet again, fear of being trapped, fear of being seen, being vulnerable, fear of not being able to leave. Because being able to leave 
makes me feel safe. Even though I could leave, not being able to be here, speak French, it was like I'm not here. Et voila. <laughs> this is the comment song. Baby cow edition. <laughs> the comment song. Baby cow edition. I can't think of a song. Look, I'm running. Look, they look like dogs. Hey, <laughs> that says a comment song. Comment song, baby cow edition. I'm pretty sure you call them calves. Calf, calf, calf. But I don't care. I prefer baby cow. <laughs> Comment song, baby cow edition. I literally just took this an hour ago while I'm riding a bike through Anthony's village. Comment, comment song, making this up as I go. And I couldn't help but look at these cows. Comment song, look at them, look at them. Feeding, feeding moo, feeding, feeding moo. Comment, comment song, comment, comment moo song. Look at her, she's looking at me, hold on. Just a second. She was like, What you taking photos of her? What you taking photos of me? Comment song. Comment, comment song. I don't know. I didn't even pick a song. I'm literally just singing crap. But this is what all musicals sound like to me. What you looking at? What you looking at? Moo. Looking, looking at the comment song. If you're new here, I sing stupid stuff at the end of the song. The comment song. Moo. Comment song. Wrap it up. Comment song. Wrap it up. Look at me waving. Bye bye. <laughs> Comment song. Three, two, one. Bye. I'm so happy I passed my test. Let me know if you heard this.